Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Skills and Abilities. Um, I felt like we should cover a fun one today and, uh, and what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to cover uh, teleports. Teleport is an interesting ability um, that quite honestly is sought after by most characters in the Diablo 2 world. Uh, I personally think it makes the game too easy, which is why you won't see me use it very often. But... I do think it is an amazing ability, and it is definitely a good one to have on a character. Um, there is a lot to go over with Teleport. Uh, most notably is Teleport's ability to be interrupted by faster hit recovery stuns. Uh, so first off, let's just go over what Teleport does. Uh, very, very basic, right? Uh, I'm sure most of you know what Teleport does by this point, but uh, just in case you're unaware, obviously Teleport will allow you to you Teleport from your original location to the place where you click. So the further away you click, the farther the distance is. The shorter you click, the shorter the distance is. You can also teleport into town, but you cannot teleport Not out here. of town, um, which is kind of interesting, and it, it was actually something that was used to uh, trick people out of items for quite some time. Uh, people used to tell other people that you they could dupe their items, and they would say, oh yeah, go ahead into the corner of town right here and drop all your items on the ground, and I'll duplicate them. And don't worry, I'll be outside of town. I totally won't be able to steal those items, and then they would just go whoop, and they would come steal all the items and, <laughs> and, uh, and laugh and leave. Um, so, Teleport has some interesting abilities, um, and one of those abilities is the ability to get you killed. Uh, teleport is, more often than not, a dangerous tool in the hands of someone who doesn't know how to use it. And you might be asking yourself, well, why is that? Well, because Teleport is actually kind of slow. Um, if you don't have faster cast rate, if you don't have what you need to be able to teleport in and teleport out of danger, you will often find yourself in just absolutely awful situations. Um, so, for instance, if I were to teleport in the middle of a group of monsters, there's a very good chance that I would not be able to teleport out again. Um, and the reason for this is because, well, when you get hit by a faster hit recovery stun, and I know this is not a faster hit recovery stun video, so uh, forgive me for going over a mechanic that is not technically part of this ability. So... Very briefly, I'm just going to go over, because this is not a faster hit recovery video, I'm going to go over very briefly what faster hit recovery is. Faster hit recovery is the ability for a monster or you to stun the opposing monster or you, uh, depending on how much HP is lost. The more HP that is lost, the more likely you are to be stuck in a faster hit recovery stun. Faster hit recovery, which is the ability which is on certain items, you will find uh, items like, for instance, the uh, set bonus on Tal Rasha's gives 25% faster recovery. Now, what does this mean? This means that when I get put into a faster hit recovery stun, I will recover from that faster hit recovery stun 25% faster. Now, why are you, why am I talking about this specifically in regards to teleport? Well, if I am teleporting along and I happen to teleport in the middle of a whole bunch of monsters, there is a very, very good chance that I will get hit. And if I do not have enough faster hit recovery, I will most likely get stuck in a faster hit recovery stun loop. Um, and what you have to understand is that because teleport gets you into trouble a lot, because you will teleport right in the middle of a group of monsters, there is a very good chance that you can effectively get yourself killed in these situations. Now, there are a couple ways that you can deal with this. Number one is to increase your defenses. Um, the higher your defense, the higher your ability to uh, you know, block attacks, to completely negate the attacks in terms of uh, you know, when somebody comes in and they check against your defense and they fail, they obviously will miss. Um, there are also ways that you can increase your, your resistance to faster hit recovery stuns. Um, since faster hit recovery stuns are directly related to the percentage of HP taken off your bar, in other words, the more percent that is taken off your bar, the higher the chance is. Uh, for instance, if a monster hit me for half of my bar, and it doesn't matter how much I have on my bar, if a monster hits me for half of my bar, there's a very good chance that I'm going to get stuck in a faster hit recovery stun and have to use my recovery rate. However, 
if the monster hits me for only 25% of my bar or 15% of my bar or so forth and so on. And as you can see where I'm going with this is that the more HP you have, then the, the, the less chance there is for you to get stuck in a faster recovery stun. Uh, there is also one more way to deal with fast hit recovery stuns as far as teleporting is concerned, and that is to teleport really, really fast. So if you teleport into a group of monsters and you are holding down the teleport button, this does not apply if you stop, okay? If you physically stop your character, that does not apply to this. Uh, but if you are running along with your teleport character, you are teleporting, and you are holding down the button, if you have enough faster cast rate to the point that your character will teleport in and teleport out before the monster can successfully complete an attack, you will be safe. But here's where this kind of falls apart. If you stop for whatever reason, if there is a glitch, if you get stuck, for instance, if you try and teleport somewhere where you're not supposed to be and it just kind of puts you back into the same place where it doesn't complete the teleport, there are a lot of reasons why a potential teleport could fail you in this regard. However, having very high teleport faster cast, having a very high faster cast rate, will save you in certain situations where you would otherwise die. Um, so if you find yourself dying all the time to, fa to teleporting your character, you know, you are trying to teleport your character and you can't, um, this can definitely help you out to get a little bit more faster cast uh, to make it uh, worth your while. Now, how much faster cast is enough? Well, that depends on each individual character. Um, if you are trying to get uh, a certain amount of faster cast on, say, a druid or a barbarian or whatever it is that you may want, um, every single one of them is going to have a different faster cast breakpoint system, except for barbarian, which for some reason I think is exactly the same as sorceress, which is just silly. Um, and, uh, and, and basically what you're looking at is you're looking to get to an exact number. Now, let's start with a sorceress. Um, and I'm fairly certain this is the right number for the Sorceress. Um, you need at least 63% faster cast if you want this to work with teleport. Um, if you want to be able to teleport in and teleport out before the monster completes an attack, uh, for Sorceress, you're going to need at least 63%, uh, which I believe is uh, 9 frames. Let me double check this real quick. Uh, 63%, yes, 9 frames. So you're going to need at least a 9 frame faster cast with Sorceress if you want to, uh, to teleport safely. I would also recommend that if you want to teleport safely on a Sorceress, that you get yourself um, about 86% faster hit recovery um, let me double check that as well yeah about about 86 percent uh faster recovery is is pretty easily obtainable and is honestly um, a good number for sorceresses every character is different though every character has different breakpoints for faster ca cast rate and for faster hit recovery and so you're going to have to look at each individual character you know by themselves uh, what else is teleport good for except for getting around if, if, if that's all that's good for, you know, just getting around faster or, or skipping over a, a river of lava or a lake or something like that, um, then uh, that doesn't seem quite right. What, what else potentially could teleport be good for besides just simply getting around quickly? Well, the answer to that question is actually in different classes. So um, there are definitely a lot of other classes in the game. Obviously, you've got barbarians, assassins, you've got necromancers, you've got you've got uh, paladins, you've got all sorts of different characters. Well, everybody usually has a mercenary, and also, dang, that snuck up on me. And everybody usually has some type of minion. You know, like the the Amazon has the Valkyrie, the necromancer has uh, his army the golems and the skeletons that revives. The druid has his bear and his uh, and his wolves and his uh, you know he's got um, his spirits and his little his little vines and everything. And uh, and every single character in the game kind of has their own specific reason why teleport could potentially be good for them. And I'd like to take a minute and show you what I mean. 
All right, so to demonstrate how useful teleport can be to a non-sorceress class and how it can be useful in a way other than just simply making yourself go fast, uh, gotta go fast, Sanic the Hedgehog. I'm gonna bring you to my Necromancer. So this is my Necromancer. Um, I, his name is Naked Mancer because uh, I originally played him using only magic fine equipment. So here we are and I have my army. My army is spread out all over the battlefield, right? So everywhere that my army can possibly be um, is not where I want them to be. I would rather them be, you know, sort of with me than, uh, than you know, wherever they would like to be. Um, and if I go up here to this particular zone, uh, I would maybe like my army to come up here and fight Pindleskin. But look at my army. Look at how terrible they are behaving. Look at how spread out they are and how not in where I would like them to be. So what do I do? Well, I teleport myself directly on top of where I want them to be. And when you teleport, your entire army comes with you. And as you can see, my entire army is now focused in one zone. Or rather, if I wanted, focused on one particular monster. And this is a, a very interesting thing. If you are a necromancer or a zoo druid or any character that has an, uh, an, an army of any kind or a minion or, or, you know, maybe you're a Valkazon. Maybe you've built, like, the most ridiculously high level, like, level 50 Valkyrie that you've ever had. And you want to have a way to focus your Valkyrie onto the target that you want him to fight. Well, this is how you can do it. You can literally take your, val your army and you can stomp directly on top of a monster's head. And you can kill them. Any monster that you want. Like, if I want to kill this Urdar... Well, goodbye, Erdar, because my entire army is now on top of the Erdar. Um, in this way, teleport can be extremely effective um, for a myriad of reasons. Um, now, you might be asking yourself, well, how can you get a hold of teleport? Well, there's a lot of different items that have teleport. Uh, one of them in particular, which is probably the most notorious, is the Enigma Rune Word, uh, which is a rune word that actually grants the teleport ability. But there are other ways that you can get your hands on teleport items besides just simply Enigma. Um, you don't necessarily need to be able to spam the ability for it to be useful. As you can see with my Necromancer, who is not using Enigma, by the way, uh, he is capable of teleporting onto targets. So how does he do this? How is he capable of teleporting onto a target when you can't? So besides Enigma, there are a couple ways. Um, obviously, Enigma gives you plus one. Uh, there is also the Spell Steel Bearded Axe, which will give you 20 charges of level one teleport, which is absolutely fine. The, the level does not matter as far as charges are concerned. Uh, there is also Naj's Puzzler Elder Staff, which will give you 69 charges. That's right, 69 uh, of level 11 teleport. Uh, we also have the Oculus Swirling Crystal, which will randomly teleport you around, but that one is a, a sorceress item. Um, you can also have the effect appear on certain items in the game. So uh, it's called a charge suffix. And uh, what this means is that there are certain items in the game that can spawn with teleport charges. And those include amulets, circlets, staves, and orbs. Uh, now, amulets are absolutely amazing when you find them with teleport charges. This is my particular amulet that I found for my uh, Necromancer, and I've been using it ever since. It is plus two summoning skills, it is all resistances 14 with a little bit of extra fire, and it also gives me 22 level one teleport charges. Um, you can also theoretically go and shop for a teleport staff, which is something that a lot of people will do. Now, I prefer the amulet because I don't have to swap to it, but some people don't really particularly care whether it's an amulet, a staff, a circlet, or whatever, just so long as they have a form of teleport to help them out. Now, what you would do is you would specifically look for an item that has teleport charges on it. And speaking of charges, here's a uh, lower resistance staff with uh, level one lower resist charges of 22, which is actually not bad. Lower resist charges are actually pretty sweet as well. Um, and what you would do is you would go in and out of shops uh, repeatedly until you found one that had teleport charges and you could buy it. There is an exact level that you can go to and you can find teleport charges. I believe Ormus 
I want to say Ormus in normal difficulty is one of the best ones. So if you created a game um, and you went to Ormus in normal difficulty, um, you can usually shop him relatively easily. And what I mean by shop him is you have to actually go to him and, uh, and you have to check his inventory and then you need to leave town. Um, if you've never done this before, um, it does require either A, you to be alone in the game, or B, for everyone to leave the town. Um, and, and you might be asking yourself, well, why is that? Um, and that is basically because if you do not leave town, if there is still one person left in town, his inventory will not refresh. All right? Um, it doesn't matter how you leave town. You can leave by waypoint. You can walk outside of town. Um, you know, you can uh, leave and come back if you want to, but but uh, the easiest way is just simply to walk outside of town. As you can see, I currently have, uh, you know, the same exact items in here because I have not left town yet. But if I walk over here to the exit, make sure that I see the notification that I have left town. See, entering Spider Forest, and then immediately walk back in and check Ormus' shop again. He will have a refreshed shop. This is what's called shopping, essentially. So we are shopping Ormus. And, uh, and what we are looking for, of course, is a teleport staff. Um, you can do this all day long, and you can see if you can find a teleport staff, or you can just simply trade for one. Sometimes people will have a teleport staff just sitting around. I know me particularly, uh, when I find a teleport amulet or a teleport staff or something like that, I will usually hold on to it for other people. Um, and that is another way that you could obtain a teleport item, which is through gambling. So uh, one, of the ways, one of the ways that I've actually gotten a lot of my teleport amulets is actually by gambling. I'll save up a lot of money, and I will go to the yes. uh, to the gamble shop, and I will gamble for amulets until I find myself a teleport amulet. Um, sometimes those amulets will be exceedingly good, uh, since the gamble shop depends on the level of your character, and the higher level your character is, the better the chance you'll get something very nice. What do you need? Um, here is the gambler. This is Alcor in Act Three. There's gamblers in every single zone. And I could, of course, gamble for a, uh, an item from him. Uh, I'd like to reduce the value, the cost of that, though. So before I go through the process of gambling from Alcor, um, let me grab my Edge Bow, which has a 15% reduction in vendor cost. I can't. And do 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 do. And we will also grab my Geeds which also has a reduction in vendor cost. So I will have a total of 15% and 15%, which is a reduction of 30% in vendor costs uh, for this item. And as you can see earlier, when it was 63,000, and now it is only 44,100. And I'm going to gamble for a couple amulets. Let's see what we end up with. Uh, so no good, no good, no good, no good, no good. No good. Level 1 Grim Ward charges. Very interesting. Uh, Grim Ward, if you guys are aware, is uh, the one that makes all the monsters run away. Uh, it has gotten a really nice synergy bonus, but unfortunately, without the synergy bonus, it's not really much use. And all resistance is 3, all resistance is 5, and I just realized that I am in Act 3 normal, so I'm not getting full value for these items. And I would like to get full value for these items. Uh, so do keep that in mind when you are gambling, is that you probably want to gamble somewhere where you will get full value for the items that you're gambling for. And uh, you know what, let's do a little bit more gambling. This is a fun little video. Let's see if we can grab ourselves a a teleport item. Because I feel like that's, uh, that's the point of this, right? Is to see if we can grab a teleport item uh, relatively easily. I've already done the staff before in another video, but I don't think I've, I've grabbed a teleport amulet before in a video. And uh, you guys can get a little bit of gambling out of it. Who doesn't like to gamble? May I help Come you? on, Geed. Let's do some gambling. And plus one to Amazon with holy bolt charges. 26% magic find amulets. Energy and all res. Uh, we got plus one sorceress with attract charges. It's actually not bad. Um, attract charges are actually pretty useful for a character who doesn't have any kind of tanking. So we'll brown. Hold on to that. And nothing good. 
Plus two elemental, nothing good. Plus three cold skills, I probably shouldn't have sold that, but that's okay. I saw blue. Which, by the way, your teleport amulet, if you do happen to get one, is most likely going to be blue. So do keep that in mind. Plus one assassin, all resistance is four. Not really that great with tornado charges. Mm. Meh, meh. But as you can see, it's worth 35,000 gold, though. And that one's terrible. Plus one Amazonian. Oh, wow. Plus three cold skills with 51 life. Terrible. Terrible. Keep on. Well, I'll hang on to that cold skills one. All resistance is 23. So, no luck on the teleport amulet. Um, I think I'm out of gold. Maybe I have enough for one more. Two more. Oh, wow. Plus two druid with 22% uh, magic find. Not bad. Plus two druid with 22% magic find. That could be useful in a magic finding druid. Mm hmm. Maybe for a zoo druid. Ah. I think in the head here. Yes. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, even when it's a 21-minute video on teleporting. I hope I've given you some insight on what teleport could potentially be used for, and, um, you know, maybe you'll uh, think about grabbing a teleport amulet for your necromancer. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, keep watching.